Scott's gone into detail about the benefits of environmental upgrade agreements and how you can assist clients in developing a retrofit project. So I'll give you a quick overview of the application process. Now, as you can see up there, the process takes around eight weeks from submitting an application to Sustainable Melbourne Fund through to signing the environmental upgrade agreement. Now, I suppose just briefly there, we have 10 days to confirm eligibility once you apply to Sustainable Melbourne Fund a minimum of 10 days to secure funding from a financier, obviously depending on the particular circumstances. And then there's satisfying the legislative requirements, which once those have been satisfied, there's a 28 day mandatory waiting period, and then through to signing of the agreement. So just one point to note there is that you can actually undertake a couple of these steps at the same time to speed things up in terms of the time frame. So you can actually engage with the financier before you have your application confirmed from Sustainable Melbourne Fund. Obviously it means once your application is confirmed, the um, building owner and the lender can then satisfy the legislative requirements, therefore skipping potentially sort of a week or two in the overall, overall time frame. Now Scott's gone a little bit into the application process, but it's, it's two stages. The first is the application to Sustainable Melbourne Fund to confirm the eligibility of the project. The second is securing funds from a financier with Sustainable Melbourne Fund approval. So the first, talking you through the first stage, which is the application to Sustainable Melbourne Fund, there's two application forms that you sh should have a copy of in, or in the packs on your desks. The first is the project application form, and that's where we ask for information about the building to allow Sustainable Melbourne Fund to determine their eligibility. So as Scott mentioned that the building is on rateable land, is current on the rates for payments, for example. The second part of, or second form is the project information form. That's where we request information about the retrofit project itself, including whether the project consists of common improvements or custom improvements. And as Scott mentioned, the common improvements are up on our website. And they also have a code for each one, which is helpful when you submit the application so we have a clear understanding of exactly what you're applying for. And the form also asks for information about costs, um, project costs, uh, looking at energy savings and water savings and also cost savings as well. And this is where if you have any tenancy improvements that will be included as part of your retrofit project, you put those on the project information form as well. So the majority of this information would come from the audit and the retrofit action plan. So the action plan, as, as Scott mentioned, would list or be in line with the audit and list several opportunities which can then be prioritised. And the building owner may choose to apply for the full set to Sustainable Melbourne Fund as part of this EUA or they may choose to take up a number of them now and a number of them later. And there's no restrictions on having more than one EUA or an environmental upgrade charge apply to the one property. So if people have large projects they want to stage, that's possible as well. As Scott mentioned earlier, if the building owner is a client of, of City West Water, assistance can be undertaken to obtain a water map which can help identify water saving opportunities. And at this stage of application, if you have already attain, obtained quotes for the building owner, then they can provide those with the application. So there are, the application's been submitted to Sustainable Melbourne Fund. There are three possible outcomes. The, either it's completely approved, so all the improvements meet the eligibility requirements, or there's partial approval, or the application's ineligible. Now, the guidelines that you've got in your pack and um, that we can also send to you outline you know, what those requirements are, and we're also available to talk to you at any time. Therefore, I would hope that you wouldn't just end up with a a letter or email from us saying you're inel ineligible without having a bit of an understanding as to, to why. So, you know, we're happy to sort of talk you through the process to make sure that we can actually get good projects developed from the beginning. So, as I mentioned before, there's 10 days to confirm eligibility or uh, if there's custom improvements, then that takes another 10 business days just because we refer it to the expert reference panel who re will review the application and also any supporting documentation. Now this, 
um, any information provided to the panel is subject to confiden confidentiality as part of their consultancy agreement with Sustainable Melbourne Fund. And as part of the application process, we also like to undertake a site visit just to get an understanding of the um, existing building and talk to the, either yourselves or the building owners about the project. Just a little bit about the fees that are applicable to the, e, to the Environmental Upgrade Agreement application. So there's a non-refundable $660 application fee which is to be paid at the time of submitting those first two application fund fee forms. Sorry. There's also a processing fee which is set, um, set up based on the project cost due at the time of funding and an ongoing administration fee of 0.072% of the financed amount throughout the duration of the charge. There's more information about those available in your application guide. Now we're moving on to securing funding and finalising the agreement. So look at securing funding from a financier, satisfying the legislative requirements and then signing the environmental upgrade agreement and shortly after declaring the charge. So as part of securing the funds, there are two legislative requirements that must be satisfied. The first is that the building owner notifies any existing mortgagees of their intention to enter into the environmental upgrade agreement and then providing proof of that notification through to Sustainable Melbourne Fund. And the second, the second point is the confirmation from the lender to, to council via Sustainable Melbourne Fund regarding the capital improved value. So as Scott mentioned, ensuring that the property isn't over leveraged. And the, the costs that are provided in that project information form generally be used to form part of that CRV confirmation. So once these requirements have been satisfied, there's the minimum 28 day waiting period until the agreement can be signed. And we will notify the building owner and the financier that this period has commenced and when the earliest possible signing day is. So just a little bit more about the funding. Scott's already mentioned NAB has a product ready to provide finance for environmental upgrade agreements called the Australian Environmental Upgrade Fund. And this is a partnership between NAB, Eureka Funds Management and Low Carbon Australia. And NAB has indicated they can provide loans for projects ranging from 250,000 up to 10 million. And as Scott mentioned, the first project that was signed as part of this fund was at 123 Queen Street. The other two pilot projects were funded by a Sustainable Melbourne Fund from our investment arm. And that was as a, as a means of establishing the mechanism in the marketplace. Now the application process and those couple of forms that um, I've given you, they actually only set out what Sustainable Melbourne Fund's requirements are. So lenders will have their own requirements depending on, you know, on which, um, which lender you go to. So they will independently evaluate the application for finance based on their own credit approval processes and their underwriting criteria. We are continuing to work with new lenders who are interested in using this mechanism and we would also encourage building owners to talk to their existing lenders who might be interested in financing projects using this mechanism. Now through to the contract review and signing. The environmental upgrade agreement is a three-way agreement between the building owner, lender and council, as you've already heard, and it essentially reflects the functioning of the finance mechanism set out in the legislation. So it includes the terms of the cash advance, the project scope, the cost and the repayment schedule, amongst other things. So we'd, there's a template agreement that's available via our website or also via the 12, 1200 Buildings website. And we'd encourage everyone to have a look at that and review the terms you know, when you're starting to think about a project. So while the 28 day waiting period I talked about is underway, there is an opportunity to was complete those, the financial details at the end of the contract so that when the 28 days is finished, everything's ready to go, that you don't get to the end of that and you're still sort of finalising details with the, with the lender in terms of the drawdown and, and repayment schedule. So that's why we encourage you at, at the beginning and we can send, um, send people links when they apply to actually have a look through it uh, so they know if they want to actually have anyone 
provide legal advice, they can do that at the start. Now, while we can confirm the eligibility of a project based on the estimates that can be provided in the information form, we will require accepted quotes prior to signing the agreement. And additionally, we would prefer not to address variations through the, the environmental upgrade agreement process, as that involves some slightly more complicated contract amendment processes that could perhaps easily, more easily be dealt with just with the lender independently or, or through another means. It's not to say that it can't be done, there are clauses built in, but it's, it's more complicated, I'd say, to do it that way. So after the 28-day waiting period is finished, the EUA can be signed and the charge is declared immediately after that by the City of Melbourne CEO. And as Scott mentioned earlier, this charge is able to be declared on the land because of the amendments made to the City of Melbourne Act that enabled the special charge to be placed on a, on a property. So the EUA has been signed and the charge has been declared, so the funds are then made available to, to implement the project. The terms for advancing funds are set out in the agreement, which states that an invoice showing an amount due and payable to the construction contractor for the works is required prior to drawdown. And this is set out in the schedules of the environmental upgrade agreement. We also have a couple of, of reporting stages built into this process. The first is reporting during construction if it does actually go longer than 12 months so we have an understanding of where the project is at. And also annual reporting after practical completion for the duration of the charge. So the reporting has a, a number of, of benefits. It enables the building owner to ascertain whether the project is delivering on the projected savings. And if it's not, then can work to investigate what the, what the issue might be. So we all know there could be a number of reasons for non-performance of a project. The, the second benefit is it enables Sustainable Melbourne Fund to actually monitor the success of, of these projects and also look to continuously improve our program and application process as well. And finally, Reporting enables Council to monitor the contribution of environmental upgrade agreements towards its 2020 emission reduction target. So now I'll just briefly touch on how the charge itself is repaid. So once the agreement has been signed and the charge declared, Council will issue an environmental upgrade charge notice to the building owner. And the notice will look similar to that one you can probably not see very clearly up there on the right, but it shows the total...